rules and the leaders change. But Germany's maniacal urge to impose its will on others continues from generation to generation. five years, this madness has cost the world more than 20 million killed, more than 60 million wounded, more than 200 million made homeless. This does not include the untold millions that died of disease resulting from war, or the billions upon billions of dollars worth of property destroyed, nor does this include the grief, the anguish, the misery, the terror that the world has suffered. Due to the Germans' insane passion to enforce their rule upon their neighbors, this passion for conquest reached its hysterical climax when Adolf Hitler enthroned himself as God and the German Führer. What fantastic dreams was this humorless man dreaming as he stood at Nuremberg and looked down on his fanatic followers? In the Middle Ages, a plague of slavery descended on the world. Out of the wilds of Mongolia came a mighty army of fierce horsemen, led by Genghis Khan. Burning, looting, pillaging, the barbarian horde swept across Asia and Eastern Europe. Genghis Khan conquered most of the world of the 13th century. Adolf Hitler was determined to outdo him and conquer all of the world of the 20th. Set up at Munich was an institute devoted to the little-known science of geopolitics, vaguely defined as the military control of space. Germany's leading geopolitician, a former general, Karl Haushofer, was head man. Here was gathered together more information about your hometown than you yourself know. To the German geopolitician, the world is not made up of men and women and children who live and love and dream of better things. It is made up of only two elements, labor and raw materials. The geopolitician's job was to transform Hitler's ambition to control these elements into cold, hard reality. On their map, our planet is neatly divided into land and water. Water forms three quarters of the Earth's surface. Land, only one quarter. And in that one quarter of the Earth's surface lies the world's wealth, all its natural resources. Hitler's theory. This all-important land, the geopoliticians now break up into two areas. One, the Western Hemisphere, which, together with Australia and all the islands of the world, including Japan, comprises one-third of the land area. The other area, which consists of Europe, Asia, and Africa, makes up the other two-thirds. This supercontinent, which they call the World Island, is not only twice as large as the rest of the land area, but also includes seven-eighths of the world's population. The heart of this World Island comprises Eastern Europe and most of Asia. This they call the Heartland, which just about coincides with the old empire of Genghis Khan. 
Hitler's step-by-step -step plan for world conquest can be summarized this way. Conquer Eastern Europe, and you dominate the heartland. Conquer the heartland, and you dominate the world island. Conquer the world island, and you dominate the world. That was the dream in Hitler's mind as he stood at Nuremberg. Hitler! Sieg! 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 With pagan pageantry, the district leaders from all over Germany swore personal allegiance to him, hypnotized with the belief that they were members of a master race. This film will deal with act one of the Nazi bid for world power, the most fantastic play in all recorded history. Hitler had seen Hirohito grab off Manchuria and other territory from the Chinese. He had watched Mussolini get away with the rape of Ethiopia. He had seen the democratic world look the other way while these illegal aggressions were going on. And he smiled. For collective action to enforce peace, the only weapon he had to fear had broken down. It was time now for the Nazis to start crossing borders. It was time for Hitler to put his plan into action. And what was he waiting for? He was waiting to soften up his victims, keep them from uniting. Opening up process, he sent his agents all over the world disguised as tourists, students, and commercial travelers. Payoff men like Ribbentrop came too, to bribe, threaten, and form local fascist parties such as de Grel and his Rexist party in Belgium, Henlein in Czechoslovakia, Seis Inquart and his National Socialists in Austria. In Britain, Sir Oswald Mosley offered himself to the people as a Hitler with an Oxford accent. In other words, I'm told that Hitler is mad. Well, I've got another view myself. Until the day when they would make easy Hitler's actual invasion, these subversive fascist organizations provoked riots and rebellions, creating scenes like these in France. Scenes like these in Belgium. And where do you think this is? Right in Madison Square Garden, USA. And this is Fritz Kuhn, leader of a German-American Bund, hiding behind the American flag but taking his orders from Berlin and copying the methods of Berlin. That was the softening up process outside Germany. But inside Germany, it was a different story. Here in utmost secrecy, the hardening up process, building up Hitler's army and his industry. have no raw materials and never let them see what goes on. Day after day, night after night, month after month, year after year, we must have the world's most powerful club. Forget ours. Forget working conditions. Forget how to think. Forge the club of blood and iron. Let the democracies talk about freedom. No freedom here. No labor unions. No overtime. The Fuhrer tells you where to work. When to work. How long to work. How much your work is worth. Forge the club of blood and iron. We have a sacred mission. Today we rule Germany. Tomorrow, the world. For those who don't like it, you don't eat. Or 
tomorrow you disappear into a concentration camp. Or you get this. And this is the man who gives it to you. And what of the army? Before Hitler came into power, the German army, by treaty, was limited to 100,000 men. But treaties to the Germans have always been something to ignore. These 100,000 men were, in reality, 100,000 highly trained officers, the men who lead the Nazi regiments today. But Hitler didn't merely ignore the treaty. He tore it up and, in 1935, ordered national conscription. Simultaneously, he ordered German youth to become air-minded. Toy gliders filled the air. But as the boys grew bigger, so did the gliders. Soon these same youths were trained pilots, flying the new planes the factories were producing. The Luftwaffe was being assembled. about this new army was the goose step. And even Hitler couldn't improve on that ancient German form of torture, designed to make man stop thinking and blindly obey. Goose step them until they become as insensible as weapons. Everything else was new. Tanks, motorized equipment, and one of our own inventions, the dive bomber. rearmament was strictly illegal according to the Versailles Treaty and the next illegal step Hitler took was to march his troops into the Rhineland a strip of land between Germany and France demilitarized after the last war as a precaution against future German aggression but Hitler's plan of Eastern conquest demanded a barrier against democratic action in the West so Hitler remilitarized the Rhineland and began building the formidable Siegfried line a chain of forts and defenses 450 miles long and in some places 30 miles wide. Germany had fought one two-front war and didn't want another. 